In this video, I cover useful 8-ball break cheat codes. The purpose of the video isn't to teach you how to cheat. It is to make you more aware of how some people might attempt to cheat against you. Also, sometimes you can take advantage of how your opponent is racking or how the balls tend to sit on a particular table, but only if you know how to read the rack. And some of the cheat codes in this video are simply good breaking advice tips. The most famous cheat code on the 8-ball break is Corey Duell's pattern racking trick. Here's an excerpt from my best pool break shots of all time video that explains how it works. If you watch Corey rack during this tournament, it is clear he is carefully placing the balls in a certain pattern. Pattern racking like this is not legal under the official rules of pool, but some tournaments, refs, and players fail to enforce the rule. Here's the ball pattern Corey was using. With this pattern, using a slow to medium speed second ball break, the solid spread up table and the stripes stay clustered down table. Here's an example. This makes it easy for you to run the solids and difficult for your opponent to run the stripes. This is a deadly tactic. Obviously, it works only if the racked balls are tight. For example, using a racking template with new balls so you can reliably pocket the corner ball and have a shot after the break. Here, Corey switches the stripes and solids to mix things up a little, but the approach is the same. Here's another. Isn't it amazing how well this approach works? Too bad it's illegal under standard rules. As demonstrated in my recent video dealing with how to make the 8-ball on the break, the second ball break offers several powerful advantages when playing on a 7-foot bar box. If you play under rules where pocketing the 8 on the break counts as a win, for example in the APA League system, the second ball break is a smart choice. You break from the side and aim to hit the second ball as squarely as possible without risking hitting the one first. With fast speed, hitting the cue ball center ball will send it straight across the table back into the rack area, where it can break out any balls that might remain clustered. The main goal is to pocket the far corner ball. The near corner ball also sometimes goes. And the 8 almost always moves and gets kissed by other balls. The 8 often heads toward the opposite side pocket, but it can also get kissed into the other side pocket or toward the upper corners. Here are some examples where one or both of the corner balls go. And here are some examples of pocketing the eight. Here, it almost goes in the opposite side. Another 8-ball break cheat code is knowing how to read the rack. If there are gaps between certain balls in the rack, either on purpose or because that's how the balls are racking on a given table, this will affect the direction key balls head. Recently, I did a study trying to determine which gaps in the rack are important. I did tests using the second ball break on a 9-foot table, but some of the results also provide useful advice for breaking on a bar box. Earlier, we saw that the far corner ball tends to go on a second ball break on a bar box, especially if the rack is tight. Here's an excerpt from my recent second ball break video showing that table size makes a difference. The far corner ball tends to go above the pocket on a 9-foot table. Here's an example. But with the same corner ball direction, it tends to go on a bar box. If there is a gap between the balls behind the 8 ball, here are the 3 and 7, the corner ball will head more down table with a chance to go in the corner. The balls rack very tightly on this table because the table has been trained and the balls are fairly new. For more information on how to get a tight rack, see the link in the video description. To simulate gaps in different locations, I placed thin pieces of tissue paper between the balls at the gaps of interest. Here, with the tissue and gap between the balls behind the 8, the corner ball goes on the 9-foot table. So if you are playing on a 9-foot table, look to see if there is a gap between the balls behind the 8. 
If there is, break from the side of the table away from the gap to have a chance to pocket the far corner ball. If you are instead playing on a bar box, make sure there is no gap between the balls behind the eight to get the corner ball to go. The object ball you hit with the second ball break tends to come back toward the side pocket, but with a tight rack, it usually comes a little low. With a gap next to the 8 on the far side, here between the 5 and 8, the second ball has a better chance to go. So again, having gaps on the far side of the 8, either behind or on the side, seem to help with pocketing balls on a 9-foot table. Probably the most useful cheat code for a second ball break on a bar box is to rack the balls as tightly as you can. For advice on how to do this, see the link in the video description. As we have seen, with a tight rack, the far corner ball is pretty much wired to go. The final cheat code is having good strategy for a standard power break either on a 9 foot table or a bar box. The most common power 8 ball break strategy is shown here. The main goal is to hit the one ball squarely to try to get one or both of the second row balls into the side pockets. Positioning the cue ball slightly off center gives a better chance for this since the balls will be coming out at slightly different angles, allowing one to still go if you don't hit the one ball perfectly squarely. The off center position also gives the one ball a chance to go in the upper corner. With enough speed and a little luck, the corner balls also have a chance to go four rails to the corners. Common practice is to use slight topspin to squat the cue ball near the center of the table. With the equipment I am using, when I try to squat the cue ball, the second row balls come up short of the side pockets. On this table, by using no spin or slight bottom spin, I get good results. Here are some examples where I made both second row balls on the break. All resources mentioned in this video can be found via the links in the video description or pinned comment. Check them out if you want to learn more about any of the topics covered. And good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.